I am blue. Uh, ooh. Questions from any homework? General questions? Yes. Yes. What's up? Uh, hi, Professor. Sorry. Uh, can you a little explain about 3.5? Because uh, um, I got confused. I forgot what did you say about that. Can you one more time explain? Thank you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is your question is it generally, the about, entire generally about the 3.5? OK. Uh, all right. Let me see if I can wrap that up. Thank you. Uh, I like a question like that. Just re-explain this entire section, please. Um, all right, so here's three five. This is the one about word problems. This is the one that I asked you to get into and try. Uh, if you are trying the questions, then come with some specific questions about the problems. Um, we did the handout. Remember, we did the handout. Let me see. Let me show you the handout. Uh, that's just a little too vague of a question for me to work with. I need a little bit more specific something to work with. Uh, but let me show you this. Where to go? Here it is. So up in Canvas, we did this handout, word problems. All right, we discussed writing down the players, figuring out who's just X and so forth. All right, so we have this sheet to look at for help. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to re-lecture over the section. I need something to work with. Have you tried the problems out and you're not able to do them? Yes. Uh, actually, I forgot the, about uh, relevant uh, information about oh. relevant. Yeah. All right. Now, listen. Relevant information means... If I said, um, I want to go to the store to get seven bagels, and the store is 12 miles away, and I'm going to go 60 mile an hour, <laughs> the, what would not be relevant would be the seven bagels, correct? If I want to know how long is it going to take me to get to the store, you're not going to say, well, let's see, you, get, you want seven bagels, right? Not six? Okay. It's like, that doesn't affect, do you understand? So like here... This is kind of silly, but the irrelevant information here is that there may be alligators living in this pothole or in this, uh, yeah, this hole, right? That's irrelevant. Now, now, something more meaningful would be, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, we talked about this one right here. We talked about this problem right here. I want to fit, I want to put a wall around this rectangular area. I have 309 feet of wall. That's important. What is irrelevant is that it's three foot high. It doesn't matter. That the height of it doesn't change how big my rectangle is going to end up being able to be. I don't care if it's 20 foot high or one foot high. I just want to enclose this area it doesn't matter how tall the fence is does that make sense that's all relevant means to be relevant means you're going to actually affect what the answer could be so the alligators won't affect it the bagels won't affect it the the height of the wall won't affect the answer so it's irrelevant so there will be information in a problem in real life that you don't put into a formula. It doesn't belong in a formula. It doesn't change anything. No? Thank you. Uh, just can you uh, please uh, tell us the formula was Y uh, equal KX, right? Oh, okay. So specifically for direct variation. And now I can say this. Direct variation is just a line where the y-intercept is zero, zero. Remember, what is it about direct variation? It's got to start at zero. The, what's the equation of a line? Y equals, what's the equation of a line? Somebody. Anybody. Somebody. Y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. 
What if B is zero, meaning the y-intercept is zero, zero? Don't you get y equals mx? And couldn't we, for some crazy reason, decide to call mk? Because why is m the letter m? Just because. So that section about direct variation was kind of like a precursor. It was kind of like a baby step in the direction of the full mx plus b. So this book does build, it tries to build so much that it sometimes takes forever to get to the point, but building is good. That was one step in the direction of MX plus B. You don't like that answer, but oh well. <laughs> okay, thank you, Professor. You're and for, for number uh, three, if you read it, it's crazy. <laughs> Which, no, which you didn't have enough to get the get you started. Good luck. We are all continue counting on you, something like that. Yeah, I know, I know. The authors have a weird sense of humor. I'm I'm almost certain you guys have picked up on that. In fact, I would put quotes around humor, but um, yeah, this part is unnecessary. This this part here is irrelevant. <laughs> but you should have all you need to get started. You should. And all right, and I think I said this in class, this is not a standard word problem. You actually don't have to set up variables, none of that shit. You can just work with the numbers. So you do have to understand when a problem that has a lot of words is not automatically a word problem. A word problem is when we have to assign variables and set up equations. Here, you can just work directly with the numbers. All right, maybe, I don't know. So it's, I don't know how many of you guys have tried this problem out. If anybody has a specific question about this problem, we can talk about it right now. I asked you to come ready with questions from this section. So um, cha -cha -cha. no, okay, all right. Um, okay. Now look, all right, let me talk a little bit about this because I'm almost certain some of you guys have questions you're just not asking. So they had to put a temporary tire on, correct? And it decreased their speed by 15 miles an hour. Now, how, when would this information be useful? What would I have to know for this information, decrease their speed by 15 miles an hour? What would I have to know for that to be useful? What they were the regular speed yeah, the yeah. regular speed do they give us any information to tell us what their normal speed is on that on that road no the 39 miles takes 45 minutes duh <laughs> sorry i love it nope yeah of course right there this is how long it normally takes us isn't this going to be a way to get the normal speed yeah and, and I think we talked about this before. I can't remember if it was office hours or what, but this is a problem because it's in minutes. And of course, I want to be miles per hour. So you need to convert that to hours first. We know that 45 minutes is three-fourths of an hour. Everybody does now. So stop talking. Don't give too much away. Oh, now, okay. You're fine, Trish. Um, I want to ask you, what if it was a uh, 50 mile drive and it normally took uh, two hours? What if that was what it was? What would their normal speed be? 25 miles an hour. Yep. How'd you get that? Because um, one hour would be 25 miles. So you did 50 miles divided by two hours right yeah and of course that's 25 miles per hour okay so if you convert now unfortunately for you that's not what it is is it but so go away it's too bad go away nice numbers now do everything we just did after you convert this to hours do the same exact math you gotta you gotta calculate you can do that shit in the calculator Is that helping anybody? Do you guys understand? And this is actually the way to approach this. Okay, they tell me it decreased my speed.
by 15. Well, what the freak is my normal speed? Oh shit, I gave, they gave me more information. I can figure out the normal speed. I can subtract 15 from it. Woo and of course, what's the formula that's kind of like behind the scenes that we've already used once here? What's the formula? Distance equals. Um, RT. Good. Yeah. Dirt. Distance equals rate, which in this case is speed, times time. That says speed in some other language. I don't know. Okay. All right, guys. So this really is a situation where you have to deal with what you're given. You can't say, well, I, where's an example like this? No, no, this is a problem that could come up. You've got to deal with it as it comes. Right? So don't try to standardize these kind of problems. You have to work with what you know in the situation. I don't know if that, I mean, that's not going to make anybody feel good because you can't just go back. To, example number seven is just like this one. No, no, no. Okay, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Is everybody just kind of skipping the section and hoping I don't notice or something? Is that what's happening? I don't know. Well, we'll find out, all right. Nobody wants to start the section, is that what it is? Is anybody finished with this section or feel okay about this section, anybody? I'm halfway done with it, it's just taking a while. Yeah, I mean, that's what to expect. Like that's all the homeworks problems. just take me a while. Oh, okay, well, all right. Word problems normally take a little bit longer. Okay. And I think I helped out on this problem. I can't remember which class it was. It was me. Oh, was that during office hours or class? That was class. Oh, good. So it's on video. It's recorded. Okay. All right. Anything else, guys, before we get back into what we left off in the book here? Can you just go over number five? Like, I think I started it, but like, then I think I just got tripped up so the big thing to do on number five is to first draw the picture right we've already i've already said a couple times this is irrelevant right yes so don't try to work that into the problem you don't have to use every number they give you it always feels like some students believe well they put it down it must be important no no, no. that's actually um, very helpful good what are the players in this problem? The the 309 total feet. That's not a player. That's the end result. Oh, no. What are the players? What are the parts that we're working with? The length to be twice the width. The length and the width. So the first step in any word problem doesn't have shit to do with math. Right? Right. The math word problem. But the first step is, I don't give a shit about math. Just in English, what is it we're dealing with? Length and width, correct? That's what mm -hmm. we're dealing with. Now, we start to translate into math. So this is what I think people get confused about. The first step in a word problem is not a math step. It isn't. Because a word problem is in English. So the first step is English. Now it's translate to math. So let me, let me help out more than I really want to in this problem. So she wants the length to be twice the width. So which one of these do I have to know first? So I have to call it X, which one, or call it whatever. Give it a letter. Uh, the width. I want everybody to understand why that's true. She wants the length to be twice the width. So don't I have to know the width first to figure out what the length is, right? Because okay. then I can just do what to it. So if I call the width W or X, it doesn't matter. What must the length be now? 2W? Yeah, twice what I just wrote down. So a big mistake people make is they have like more than one variable running around in their equation. You can't solve that then. Everything has to relate to a single variable, at least in the word problems we're doing right now. Later, we'll start to work with two variables. And then they're gonna go, yeah, yeah. All right. 
So then I would highly recommend you label the picture and this is as far as I'm gonna go. So okay, now I, that I comes into play. I got it from here. Thank you. Equation. There we go. Ba, 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 equation. Okay. A lot of these end up turning out to be easier than they, you know, really are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but don't get me wrong. If you don't know what's important to look at, it seems impossible. Exactly. Um, but what I'm hoping is after working with some of these and, and working with the examples we did on that worksheet, you start to realize what to look for. You start to realize what's important. And then you can tackle any freaking word problem because they all basically have the same format, the same approach, let me say, the same kind of approach. Number seven, nobody's asked me about it, but it, it's, uh, if you kind of, I think I kind of got you guys started. I drew a picture. If you draw a picture, it's, it's, it's easier. So number seven actually has no variables because you know everything. Number eight is where they start to bring in variables and you have to figure out how to generalize what you did. Okay. And of course we talked about the, uh, this kind of problem here, grass seed mixes. Okay. Anything else, guys? No. No. What was that? <laughs> that was creepy. No. Out. All right. All right. So here we go. Let's keep on going. We're going to look at section 3A. Oh, by the way, let me tell you sort of the plan here. We're going to do 3A today. Tomorrow, we're actually going to do some stuff related to 3.9, and if you'll notice, 3.9 has no assignment connected to it. But I do want to do an example problem so that you're kind of ready for statistics if you're going to take stats next. Oh, did I? Did I talk to you about? Yeah, I think I did. My stats over the summer is now remote again. Did I tell you guys that? No, you didn't. You said it was going to be in class. Oh, okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. All right. Um, there are still on-campus classes in the summer. Um, I probably should be more uh, discreet about this and I don't give a shit. The college uh, put classes on campus. They did not talk to the union. They did not talk to Cuyamaca. Uh, everybody was surprised it was happening. Uh, all the plans were to get everything in place to be ready for on-campus in the fall. They still have not given me how the class would work even though people are already signing up for class are you guys with me so far <laughs> so um there is a chance that all the classes will be moved off campus for the summer but i don't know yet so i just didn't feel it was right to stay on campus when there are so many questions unanswered i am not going to allow my students to be guinea pigs and if any of you were excited to be on campus i was excited to be on campus too but not until we're really ready. So I'm sorry to say I had to make the choice to pull it off campus. So um, anyway, yeah, it's a little disturbing to be honest. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about that, you can always email me or whatever. Um, Queen Maka, I don't think has any on-campus courses in the summer because that was the plan. So they were very surprised to find out and I'm the one that brought it up and let everybody know. So, <laughs> yay, Jeff, the whistleblower. All right. So anyway, that's that for that. Now, let's do this. So I'm on page 393, section 38. And we're going to, if you look at the objectives, Find the y intercept in the equation of a line given two points, any two points. So we're going to be able to, in fact, guys, how many points, if I give you one point that's on my line. So if I tell you my line goes through the point two, three, can you draw my line? 
If I tell you it goes to the point two, three, can you draw the line? Can you draw the line that I'm talking about? No. Where does it start? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good. So I don't know where it starts. I don't know where it goes. I don't know shit. If I gave you one more point, if I said, oh, yeah, it goes through the point one, one also. Now, can you draw my line? Yes. Of yeah. course you can. Right now, listen. This is beautiful. If in reality, it takes any two points to draw a line, that means that I should be able to find the equation of the line from any two points. I really want this to make sense. So if visually I need two points to draw a line, that means mathematically, I should be able to get the equation from just any two points. Yes, maybe, yes. Yes. To kind of extend this, let me see if I can push this a little bit. To be able to draw a circle somewhere, what, what two things would you need to know? How much do you guys know about circles? What's the most important thing to know about a circle if I wanted to draw one? A specific uh, the circumference, right? Nah. I guess. Sort of. That it's 360 degrees, uh, maybe the radius. Ah, there we go. Every circle's got 360 degrees. Well, in the geometry that we use, but we'll, all right. Um, but the one of the most important things to know is the radius. So if I know the radius is two, is it this circle or that circle? What else do I need besides just the radius? Because maybe both of these have a radius of two, right? I have to also know where the what's this? Oh, where the center point is. Where the center is. It's sort of like having to know a point, and then maybe I can know the slope, and then I can have a line, right? I have to have two pieces of information. We're not going to suddenly do this. But whatever the equation of a circle is, I can write it if I know the center and the radius. Whatever the equation of a line is, I can write it if I know two points or if I know a point and the slope. Are you guys with me? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, let me stop doing that. Come down here. Here we go. All right. So congratulations. Your boss likes you. Blah 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 blah. Bunch of shit. So they tell me uh, we're gonna have a party. Uh, and this is uh, let's say that this is uh, <laughs> just to make this realistic. Let's say this is January, twenty twenty two. All right. Well, and who knows? All right. Let's let's be optimistic. Maybe that's true. Okay. Um, and we're going to have this big party in this banquet hall. Yeah. And we're hosting 150 people, and that will cost $6,500. They tell us that if you make the number of guests 200 people, then the bill jumps up to $8,500. Can somebody tell me? All right, let me see how do I want to say this. Oh, all right, let me just ask it like this and then I'll build it up to you. Um, do we have enough information to write the equation of a line? Not do you know how to do it, but do you think we have enough information to find the equation of number of people versus cost? Mm, well, we know how much it increases. Uh, we know the X or the Y, which is the guests. Okay. But we don't, well, I guess then, yeah, we do. We do have enough information. All right, good. You, you basically uh, answered part of my next question. Um, can you find two points? In fact, what are we going to call, uh, let me let me just get this direct. What are we going to call the X variable and what's going to be the Y variable? X is going to be the amount of people. Good, because that's then the one. And Y will be uh, the amount of money. Yes. Does everybody agree? Because I'm going to change the number of people and then see what the cost is. So X will be the thing that I change, and Y is the response to that. Okay, I like it. Cool. 
So it feels like we should be able to find the equation of the line from what they told us, because can somebody else, somebody I haven't heard from yet, can somebody tell me what the two, the two pieces of information, what do they look like as points? There are two points that they told me. Yeah, one point is uh, 100, uh, 150 and 6,500. And like second point is 285,000. Good. X is the number of people. Y is the cost. X is the number of people. Y is the cost. Now, I think, I can't remember who was the first person to tell me something. So I'm sorry, but you said something really interesting. You said something related to the rate of increase or something. You said how much we can see how much it increases. Can you find the slope? What's the slope? You totally can, right? Take a minute and figure out what the slope is of the line because we have two points from the line. We can figure it out now. And if anyone's ever planned a wedding or something, or I don't know, just a big party, you understand, you, you, you tell a person, well, we expect 300 people. Well, then the cost is this. And they're like, what about if there's 350? Well, then the cost is this. That is a normal part of planning a big party with some catering company or something. Yeah, a slope is 40. All right, let's see. How'd you get there? What'd you put on top? Uh, I just minus the 85,000 and uh, minus 6,500, sorry. That's right. Over, over 200 minus 150. Good, so you subtracted this direction. So you have to also subtract this direction. Yeah. The Y's are up top, the X's are on the bottom. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, we got 2000 over 50. It's going to be 40. All right. Now somebody else tell me the units on that slope. Uh the top one is dollars, the bottom one is people. I like. It. So 40 more dollars a person if I want to add more people in. 40 more dollars. All right. How are you guys doing so far? This is Good. not that big of a step from what we've done before, but this idea of chunking information into points, that's a huge step to take because then you can kind of make all the steps more mathematical. And independent of how you feel about it, that actually makes things easier. All right, so I'm going to need somebody to help me remember all these things. So we got 40 for the slope. Uh, we got these two points. So somebody remind me about that. I'm going to have to clear all this away. Here it goes. It's going to go away. Goodbye stuff. Okay. So the next thing they want us to do. So we found the slope. We talked about what the slope tells us, right? $40 per person. It goes up. Now we have to write an equation. So let's kind of copy down what we got so far. Uh, so we know that it goes through the points. I've already forgotten. You're you're just amazing, Jeff. Is it 150, 6,500? And 200, yeah. 8, Yeah, okay. Yay, Jeff. Uh, and the slope we got was 40. So, so when they say write a generic equation using, have I said these words before? No, I don't think so. Uh, y equals mx plus b is called slope intercept because math people are so creative we said hey look this has a slope and the intercept let's call it slope intercept so i mean that's actually a good idea why not just call it what it is okay i like it so that's what slope intercept for means that means y equals mx plus b now, here's the cool shit. You ready? Here comes some cool shit. Does it matter which points I pick on the line? Would the slope change if I picked a different point on the line to work with? Slope is not, not going to change. 
Yeah, because if it did, it would not still be a straight line, correct? If the slope changed, it means it curves somewhere, right? So now watch this. What is the main thing? What is it the main thing that we don't know in this equation? What's the last piece of information that we don't know? We don't know B. We don't know B, right? Do we have the y-intercept? Do they give us the y-intercept? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's just for me. All right. So now watch this. This kicks so much ass. Uh, pick a point. Somebody pick either point. Pick one. One, two. One. One. Okay. So now watch this. What's X in that point? 150. So I'm going to put 150 in place of X. Let me put above this. Let me put the equation. What's M? 40. 40. What's Y in the point that we picked? 6,500. 6,500. And then I got, I don't know what the hell B is, but can you solve for B now? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, do it. I'll sit here and wait. Shit, yeah. So what's 40 times 150? 6,000. 6,000. And then, of course, I just have to. Uh, minus 6,000. 6, 6, both sides. 6,000. I love it. And now we know that B is 500. Ah! So what's my equation then? This is where people kind of circle this and keep going, but you haven't written the equation yet. Right, y equals mx plus b. Now do we know everything we need to know? Y equals 40x plus 500. There we go. Another mistake people make is they plug back in what y and x are at that one point, but the equation is supposed to work for all points, any x, y. What if we would have picked the other point? Oh, shit. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Didn't we pick point one? What if we pick point two? What what would you expect to happen if I instead I instead of using point one's information, what if I put point two's information in here? Same result. Same result. How many how many points does our line go through? How many points? Yeah, yeah an infinite number. So they all are supposed to work in the line. So they would all end up. So let's do this work again. Oh, shit. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this out. We're going to put the other point in here. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay. I don't know how you guys want to do your, uh, your notes, but oh, well, you figure it out. So I'm going to use this point now. So I'm going to put 200 in for X. And I'm going to put 8,500 in for Y. So let's see. Let's just cut to the chase here. This will be 8,000 minus 8,000 minus 8,000. Holy schmoly. I still get B equals 500. So it still leads me to the same result. Are you guys with me? That should not be surprising. Any line, at any point on a line will work in the equation of that line. So it doesn't matter which point I pick on a line, it's going to lead to the same equation. All right, so what does the y-intercept mean? What is the y-intercept? We haven't even written it down yet. What is the y-intercept? 500. Uh, no. What does the y-intercept mean? 
Well, or, first, tell me what the y-intercept is. Let's do that first, and then we'll answer number six. Zero and the y. Zero and 40. No, 40 is a slope. Uh, what does B mean again? Oh, zero and 500. There it is. B is the Y part of the Y intercept. What physically is an intercept? An intercept is a point. So when I ask you for an intercept, your answer better have two parts, right? Don't just say the Y intercept is seven. No, it can't be, it's impossible, it's a point. All right. You're so picky, Jeff, don't oh, be quiet. Oh, excuse me, Professor. Yes. The question is, what does your- I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So we haven't answered that yet. I said I wanted the first, okay. we hadn't even written down okay. what the liner step was, because uh, it said to do it up here and we hadn't done it yet. So that was my okay, fault. Okay, thank you. Now let's answer this question. What does that mean? What's, what's the physical interpretation? What does the X piece mean again? You guys remember? What's the- People. Number, oh, people. Number of people. And the Y piece means? Your money. Money. The cost. So what does the Y intercept mean? It's at the beginning. Um, to book your event, it's going to cost $500. Beautiful. Before you even have any people. Technically, you could say if you had zero people coming, it would cost 500 But that doesn't really make sense, does it? If you have nobody coming, it's not happening. So it costs $500 just to hire these people, right? And then as you add attendees, the cost goes up, which makes sense because you got to make more food and blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay. Does it make sense? So the wider set means the cost of hiring uh, the banquet hall, or whatever the hell the company is, uh, is 500 bucks. Now, if you said for zero people, the cost is $500, technically that's right, but no human would speak like that, right? So just speak like a human. Okay. You guys doing okay out there? I'm good. All right, so let's find out. No, I actually have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So in your Y equals MX plus B thing, you multiplied the 40 by the 200. Over here. Why yeah. did you not divide? Divide what? The 8,500 by like the 40 and the 200. Because it's adding to the variable I want alone. So how do I cancel this piece out? I subtract it. Okay. Yeah. No, I saw them because they're multiplying by each other. I thought you were supposed to divide. Oh, I see. But the, the all right, let me see how do I say this. Uh, so like if I said solve this, uh, what would you do? Don't freak subtract out. 10. Subtract 10, right? Well, what if it started like this? Would that mean suddenly I do something different? No, because two times five is 10. So then I still was eventually subtract 10. So I got to, I've got to simplify that first. What was 40 times 200? 8,000. And then I say, oh, to kill it, I got to subtract. Okay. All right. I like Thank it. You. So it's a good question. I like it because there is multiplication happening, but it is not happening between a number and my variable. It's a multiplication I could just do. And gotcha. then I can see what to do after that. Yeah. Okay. I like it. All right, so we answered number seven. <laughs> what was I about to say? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Here's the exciting part. You ready? I'm going to erase all this stuff. You guys ready for that? It's all going to go away. Bye. All right, so what I want you guys to do right now is to ignore everything else on the page. Oh, shit, there's chats that I totally missed. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Here we go. Let me go back to blue instead of blood red. All right, so... I want you to find the equation of the line that goes through these two points. Uh, what do you got, Jeff? Five, uh, 11, and two, 20. 
20. I like it. So you do exactly what we just did, just using these two points. Oh, yeah, this is all right. We'll see what you guys think. This could get a little bit gross. All right, let's see. How are you guys doing with this? What's the first thing you can do immediately? Find the slope. slope. Find the slope, I like. So you can do, let's see, 20 minus 11. Oh, this is not going to be as bad as I thought. Okay. Divided by. Two minus five. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. Minus four. Minus three, sorry. That's right. So yeah, you get nine over negative three is negative three. So that's the slope is negative three. And then the second thing I do, this is kind of neat in mathematics. We write down the answer. The answer is y equals mx plus b. <laughs> and then we throw what we know in there and see what we don't know. So have you guys finished this step yet? Yeah, but we have to find out the B. Yes, and does it matter which point you pick? No. Nope. So which point did you pick? I chose five and 11. All right, so let's see, five and 11. So five is the X, 11 is the Y. So if I put 11 where the Y is, I put negative three for the slope, and I put five for the X. What do we get for my B? Hello, hello. <laughs> Is anybody out there? Yeah, yeah. You get 26, right? Negative. Oh, I do it backwards then. Yeah, negative 20. So positive 26, right? I yep. actually mixed up the negatives and the positives, and I realized, and I was like, oh, no, I got the wrong answer, so I was correcting nice. myself. Okay. And again, if you use the other point, I would put 2 in for X. I would put 20 in for Y. This is 20 equals negative 6 plus B. Add 6, add 6. I still get 20 freaking 6. Yay! Yay, so I'm done, right? I'm done. I'm so done. I was done before you even started, Jeff. What's the answer, though? I'm not done. What's the answer? Negative 3x is 26. Yeah, cool. How can you check your work? Well, I'll pick the point you didn't use and see if it works in the equation. How's everybody doing out there? You guys all right? You guys all right? Other than the little mix up I have with the negative and the positive, I, I got it. Okay, okay. I have to watch out for those. And, and real quick, 
Do you see it, five has 11 output, correct? A five input has an 11 output. Two has a bigger output. So wouldn't it make sense then that zero would have an even bigger output? That's kind of like the, the, the way the line is going. Does that make any sense? So I would expect this to be bigger than 20 and it was 26, that makes sense. So if I look at a quick little graph at five, it's at 11, oh crap, 11's way up here. At, uh, <laughs> at two, it's at 20. So I would expect at zero, it's gonna be even higher. So 26 makes sense. All right, that's, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to show you a way that to make sure this makes sense. Okay. Well, let's try a point out. If I plug in five for X, if I plug five in for X, what should come out for Y? If I put five in for X, 11 should come out. Are you guys with me out there? Kind of. What is true about the points on a line and the equation of the line? How should they interact? All the points on the line should do what when I put them into this equation? Okay, okay, this is fundamental. An equation is only true if I put points from the line it describes into it. Let me say this again. This equation should be true if I put any point that the line goes through into it. So if I put 5, 11, is this a true statement? Is 11 equal to negative 15 plus 26? Is that true? Yes. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the connection. That's why we find an equation of a line, because then we can find any point that it goes through, because they're connected. An equation of a line is a, a, a statement that works if I put a point from the line into it, and that's the only time it'll work. If I put any point that the line doesn't go through, it's not going to work in the equation. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe not. Okay. I still hear you, but I'm still confused. All right, let me do this. I'm going to clear all this away. You guys ready? Excuse me, Professor. Uh, sure. so you usually are... Uh, y intercept is B? Yes. Okay, thank you. The Y piece of the Y intercept. So be careful. What would the Y intercept be for this point? For this, uh, what would the Y intercept be for this line? Zero yes. and 26. Good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So B is the Y piece of the Y intercept. I like it. All right, I'm going to clear this away. Clear. Okay, so I haven't had this talk with you guys yet either. Uh, what's this chat? Okay. Um, all right, so this gets neat. Can somebody tell me, all right, if I write down here y equals x plus 1, can somebody give me an answer to that equation? Let's see if you guys understand what I'm asking for. Can somebody give me an answer to that equation? Do you see that the answers have to have two parts, right? Uh, it could be any number. Well, sort of. Uh, if x was 1, y would be 2. There we go. Somebody else give me another answer. Three and four. Three, four. When x is three, y is one more, four. Somebody else give me another answer. Five and six. Holy shit. Somebody else give me another answer. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Here, I'll give an answer. You ready? 1.73 and 2.73. Does anyone like this answer? Not really. But but does the answer make sense? 
It does. Yes. yes. What's the connection between the X and the Y piece? The Y piece is supposed to be one bigger than the X piece. So why did I bring this ugly ass point up? Just to remind you guys that in between every answer you gave, there's an infinite number of other answers. So how long would it take you to write down all of the answers? Forever and then some. Forever, because I go, okay, zero, one. And then 0 0.0000000001 and 1.0001. 0 0.02. 1 0.02. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> I really, is everybody sort of with me here, right? Because how many values can I put in for X? That's how many values of Y I can get. And that's an infinite number. Holy shit. So if somebody said, Give me all the answers to this. I'm not going to do this. I am going to graph. All right, zero, one, right? Zero, one, one, two, two, three. I'm going to graph and then I'm going to make a line and then going to say, there's your answer. And they're going to be like, where's my answer? Well, that point works and that point works and that point works. Every point that this line goes through works. So a graph of any equation, any function, you ready? You ready? A graph of any function like this, of any relationship between two variables is the quickest way to answer the question, what are the answers? All right, did, did this take us an infinite number of amount of time to do? No, it was quick. Would this take us an infinite? Yes, it would. So this is beautiful. Graphs are visual representations of the answer to an equation. So that is the most fundamental reason why we graph shit. <laughs> right now, there's a lot of other reasons why we graph stuff. For example, if I graph uh, a ball getting thrown up in the air and then hitting the ground, I can then find the equation of this motion and I can predict things about it. Right? And this is beautiful. This is exactly what it would look like if I was standing next to somebody and they threw a ball in the air. That's what it would look like. Right? Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, all right. So there's a lot of reasons why we graph stuff. I want you guys aware of that. Why is my cursor? My... Oh, there it is. All right, let me clear all this stuff away. Does that help at all? Whatever point this is right there, what does it do? Whatever point that is, whatever that is, what does it have to do since it's on the line? It's true, true. it's right. It has to work yeah. when I put it in this equation. That's what it means, that's the connection. Every point the line goes through works in the equation. Every point that works in the equation is one that the line goes through. It goes both ways. Okay. I'm going to clear this away. You ready? All right. What time is it? Oh, good. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. Where'd it go? Let's see what they say down here. All right. So that's basically capturing what we did, right? Solve to find B, blah, blah, blah. That's the, that's the steps we took to find the equation. Oh, uh, okay. What, what, all right, so remind me, what were the two points they gave us? Uh, Way at the 150, beginning. 150, 6,500, and 200, 8,500. All right, so let me, let me line this up a little better here. Let me see if I can do that. All right. Um, yeah, 150, 6,500, right? Is everybody cool mm -hmm. with where I just put that point? Yes. And 200, 8,500, right? No, 200, 8,500. 8, so right there. So then let me see if I can do this. Oh, this is scary. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit. All right. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I mean, come on. 
actually this wouldn't make any sense for this to be an arrow because you can't have less than zero people so we we'll just sort of stop there okay I cheated a little bit because I already know that the wine intercept is 500, right? But still, you know, I just want to make sure I got it going through the right place. Um, now, here's the thing. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, if I took, all right. When I go to solve for the slope, does it matter which two points I pick on the line? to get the slope. Would the slope change if I pick two different points? No. No. So I'm going to do something exceptionally weird as as per the, the usual. Uh, here's a point on the line. You guys agree? All right. Yeah. I have no idea what that point actually is. I can estimate. I'm just going to call it the point X, Y. It could have been anywhere. I could have put it there. I could have put it there. I could have put it way up here, right? All right. And this point, let's just pick one of these two points. This is the point 150, 6,500. Okay. Can somebody find the slope between this point and that point? Let me do something a little bit better here. Let me call this. Uh, let me rewrite this. Hold on. Don't do anything yet. Hold on. Let me be a little bit smarter here. Let me call this one X1, Y1. Now, this is going to be strange. Can you find a slope between this point and this point? So let me call this one X2, Y2, right? What's the equation of the slope then? It'll be 6,500 minus... Y1. 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 Over 150 minus X1. X1. I like it. So then I could actually you think, yeah, I'll get there eventually. Um, then I could do, now let's see if you guys are cool with this next step. This is kind of gross, right? This, this, this little thing here is kind of gross. What makes this really kind of gross because we don't know the y and true it's one but we can't do anything about that we can't do anything about that but this expression is gross because there's a denominator here right so yes. i can multiply both sides by 150 minus x1 so i've got m times 150 minus x1 equals 6,500 minus Y1. Stay with me, stay with me now. All right, I don't know. Is that is that amazing what I just did? Is that like, ooh, it's amazing? No, it's, it's stupid. It's crazy. Good job, Jeff. <laughs> right? So I don't blame you if you're sitting there going, all right, you're moving stuff around. Uh, yay, Jeff. Now. would so this is an equation of the line if i throw the m in this would be this would work this would work whatever this other point is now stay now i i don't know this is a little bit strange way to do this but that's all right does it matter that i pick this specific point could i have picked some other point of course yeah. of course yeah. i could so i'm going to pick a point i'm going to pick this point what point is it? X, Y. So instead of 150 and 6,500, I have some Y minus Y1 equals M times some X minus X1. So let me write this a little better. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. This is another equation of a line. This is called, no, so remind me, what is that again? Slope. Slope. And what is X1, Y1? That is a... First point. That's a point. So we call this slope, well, we actually call it point slope. Good job, Jeff. 
We call this the point slope form of a line. So let me let me kind of wrap up here. This equation is slope intercept, and it works really, really well if I know the slope and I know the y piece of the y intercept. This equation is built to directly work for any point. I don't have to know the y-intercept. I can just know any point. So if I know the slope and any point, so let's try this problem again. Let me pick this point right there. Y minus 6,500 equals, what was the slope again, 40? X minus 150. So let me really make sure you guys understand what I'm saying. If I pick this to be the point, then X piece is 150 and the Y piece is 6,500. Does this end up giving me the same answer we got before? Let's see. Is this the answer we got before? Yes. Yes. So this works directly. If I know the slope and the Y piece of the Y intercept, this works if I know the slope and any other point, any point, if I know any point. Whoa, <laughs> sorry. So let me clear this. I'm going to clear all this. You ready? Clear all this away. It is going away. It is, it is, it is gone. Okay. Um, so let me show you where they finally catch up with the, oh, are you kidding me? You stupid book. All right. This book needs a little help. This should be one and this should be one. I've never seen zeros on those things. That's crazy. But all right, it means the same thing. Whenever you see a variable with a subscript, like uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that just means this is a specific y. This is another specific y. This is a specific x, another specific x. So these two, come from a specific point. These two are just the X and Y variables. You don't plug anything into for them. They're just the X and Y variables. All right. What time is it? All right. Uh, I think that's enough. What do you guys think? I think I've thrown a lot into your brain. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, all right, so you're free to go if you want to. If you need to hang out afterwards, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see y'all tomorrow. All right, thank, thank you. you so much, thank Professor. You. Anytime. All right, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Professor. You Probably guys come with questions tomorrow, I guess. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see y'all later.